let us go uh, near to the word of god for the meditation today the portion i have selected is isaiah chapter 49 verse 13 through 16 isaiah 49 13 through 16 sing for joy o heavens and exult o earth break forth o mountains into singing for the lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his afflicted But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child, that she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. Thank you. Isaiah chapters 40 through 55 is addressed to the people who in exile in babylon and beginning from chapter 40 isaiah's emphasis shifts away from judgment and toward the comfort so god is presented in these chapters as the god of comfort so these chapters promise that the time of deliverance is near especially when we read uh, chapter 40 where verses 1 through two one of you can read that uh, there we see their deliverance from the exile is near chapter 40 verse verses 1 and 2 comfort comfort my people says your god speak tenderly to jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare has ended that her iniquity is pardoned that she has received from the lord's hand double for all her sins thank you so the comfort comforting the people that is the major concern of these portions and i have spoken uh, messages from these portions and i have uh, told you chapters 40 through 66 is in hymnic poetry style hymnic poetry style the sovereignty holiness and grace of god are themes that run through the whole book especially when we read chapter 6 the call of isaiah isaiah's call vision there we would see specifically these themes the sovereignty holiness and grace of god and as i just mentioned these three themes are you know we would see in entire book of isaiah then chapters 40 through 55 uh, uh, an aspect of god's sovereignty brought out that is god is creator and the redeemer god is sovereign because he is the creator and the redeemer this gives the exiles the people i told you the people are in exile this gives the people who are in exiles hope because their creator through the exodus is the creator of the universe so nothing is impossible to him he can deliver them a new exodus is promised to the people who are in exod ex in exile the proper response to god's sovereignty let me tell you the proper response to god's sovereignty is faith hallelujah so in verses uh, we would come to the portions uh, which we have Uh, read there we read a uh, sing for joy heavens and exult o earth break forth o mountains into singing for the lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his afflicted so nature is often personified uh, in isaiah especially look at that particular verse we see sing for joy O heavens and exult o earth break forth o mountains into singing hallelujah so calling the entire uh, nature to sing unto the lord hallelujah we know that isaiah specifically this portion from 40 chapters 40 through 55 there are comforting number of comforting verse so i am happy when uh, i heard achimyandi remembering the promise verse and i know that there are 
such number of verses that comforts us god you know talking to his people he says fear not i am with you i have created you i have called you i am your god hallelujah this morning shall we praise god hallelujah i told you people are in exile the exiling uh, conditions they are in desperate situation there are number of passages that portrays their situation in babylon in exile they are worrying because they are away from the promised land so in such situation we know that one psalm specifically talk about that we are in exile we forgot our songs how we will sing songs of the lord in a in an exilic land hallelujah the normal worship is impossible they cannot worship lord because of their situations they wanted to worship god but they cannot do that why because they are away from the promised land they are away from the land they are away from the temple this morning we also may be going through such exilic situations as people of god went through we know the reasons behind that why people had to go to exile these people are chosen people and god says you are my treasured possession still they had to go to exile why because sometimes they went away from god they went astray from the commandments of lord that's why god wanted to discipline them so this is the theme uh, you know many times we have um, spoke i have i myself have talked on this theme whenever the people of god they disobeyed god or they went astray from god's commandments god wanted to discipline them why god wanted to discipline them because they are his own possession because they are his own children so whenever we are going through such disciplining understand that i belong to god hallelujah whenever god disciplines us whenever we are going through such trials whenever we are going through such exilic situations then praise god because then we understand that i am a child of god hallelujah i belong to him i am a treasured possession to my lord that's why he disciplines me hallelujah hallelujah so look at this uh, verse 13 there we see sing for joy o heavens and exult o earth break forth o mountains into singing there we would see number of such passages in the bible especially in song psalm you know sing unto the lord all nations sing unto the lord all mountains you know calling entire nature to praise god why because god is the god of creation god is the creator god hallelujah specifically we are his people he redeemed us but more than that in a wider understanding you know god is the creator god hallelujah so the bible emphasizes and endorses that and calling uh, the nature the creation the mountains rivers birds to praise god and even you know calling the nations to praise god because god is not only really the god of israelites we know that they are chosen people they are special to him but at the same time in a wider sense god is the god of all nations hallelujah he rules our entire nations that's why we say he is sovereign and as i just told you you know in isaiah especially when we read chapters 40 through 55 as i just mentioned in the introduction these three themes are we would see over and over again and again we would see these three themes which are the the sovereignty of god the holiness of god and also the grace of god we know the vision of isaiah in chapter 6 hallelujah we have heard many messages on that holy holy 
holy god is sovereign hallelujah do you believe that this morning our lord is sovereign lord amen he rules over nations he rules over our situations and let me tell you he is in charge of our situations that's why even when we go through the pandemic even when we go through the exilic situations even when we go through difficulties we praise god because he is the sovereign lord hallelujah shall we praise god this morning hallelujah he is in charge tell yourself my god you are in charge you are in charge of my life that's why no worries no fears hallelujah even though i walk through the valleys of death hallelujah i will fear no evil because you are with me who that god is that god is the sovereign lord that god is the almighty god that god is the sufficient one the one who can do anything and everything for us do you believe that this morning he can do everything and anything for us nothing is impossible to him praise god and say lord nothing is impossible to him all things are possible to him nothing is impossible to him he is the sovereign lord hallelujah when god promises israelites i told you from chapters 40 onwards before that i i say i was warning them so book of isaiah about warning and comfort words of comfort we would see in book of isaiah until chapter 39 isaiah was giving warning then 40 onwards there is a shift that shift is words of comfort because you are not going to be in exile always you are not going to be in this situation always there is a breakthrough a shift is going to happen hallelujah this is true with our life as well hallelujah we are not always you know are going to be in trouble sickness tensions but shifts are possible breakthroughs are possible hallelujah, hallelujah. because god is in charge he is sovereign he has command over the situations we do believe this morning he can change our situations he can change uh, transform our situations as he did in K- with uh, the people of god in old testament times hallelujah that is possible even today that is possible even today and we praise god for that so 40 onwards chapters 40 onwards the comforting words of god he is the sovereign god he is the holy god and his grace that is again and again emphasized in this book he is gracious god sovereign lord holy god and gracious god hallelujah i say i in chapter 6 in his vision says i am an unworthy man hallelujah then god shows his grace upon him shows his grace upon him he this morning let us understand let us praise god because he is sovereign he is holy hallelujah hallelujah that understanding gives meaning to our worship he is the sovereign lord hallelujah he rules over the nations he has command over the situations he rules uh, what a profound statement that is he rules hallelujah and also he is holy god and he is gracious god a compassionate god the one who is ready always to comfort us hallelujah the one who is ready to comfort us the one who is ready uh, to console us since he is compassionate always hallelujah that is his nature so calling uh, the na- the nature to praise god let me tell you this morning we only are not we only are not uh, the people who praise god there are you know we do not know the nature praises him birds singing unto him mountains you know such imageries are given in even psalms mountains jumping in the presence of lord there's such a theophany we often find in a bible in the presence of lord you know the nature jumps up and down because of realizing the presence of god the bible says nature jumps up and down and praising him hallelujah 
then we see for the lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his afflicted as i just mentioned our god is the god of compassion there are number of passages in the bible that emphasize this fact that our god is compassionate god hallelujah let me ask you very particularly why still why we are here in this sanctuary hallelujah still why we are alive still why we are you know we we can fill up the prefix still why we are here still why we are alive still why we are able to stand up and praise god i would say that is only because of the compassion of our lord because he is compassionate lord his that is his nature i know very well that i am still alive because of his compassion his mercy for me hallelujah i know that that is your testimony as well so mountain singings sings for joy o heavens and exult o earth break forth o mountains into singing because the lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his afflicted look at verse 10 the same chapter look at verse 10 there we see you know for he who has compassion on them will lead them hallelujah just know that uh, verse you know he who has pity on them will lead them hallelujah glory to god i will read one more you can t- turn your uh, pages to f- chapter 54 isaiah chapter 54 verse 7 uh, through 10 one of you can read that read aloud uh, chapter 54 verse 7 through uh, 10 for a brief moment i deserted you but with great compassion i will gather you in overflowing anger for a moment i hid my face from you but with everlasting love i will have compassion on you says the lord your redeemer this is like the days of noah to me as i swore that the waters of noah should no more go over the earth so i have sworn that i will not be angry with you and will not rebuke you for the mountains may depart and the hills be removed but my steadfast love shall not depart from you and my covenant of peace shall not be removed says the lord who has compassion on you so co- how comforting these words are shall we praise god hallelujah, hallelujah. deserted you know abandoned all these words shows the exilic experiences of the people hallelujah abandoned the feeling of abandonment forsaken sometimes uh, we go through such situations the exilic experiences not always but sometimes if you can remember such situations and if you can remember how you overcame that praise god hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are times we went through such, such exilic situations. We think that we are abandoned, we are forsaken, and no one is there to love me, no one is there to help me. I am alone, the loneliness. Let me tell you, God can change uh, that loneliness into a profound solitude where we can experience his presence hallelujah hallelujah if you have gone through such experiences praise god hallelujah such ex- such experiences are common or sometimes at least sometimes such experiences we may have such ex- exilic experiences we have a lot of people around us but no one there to communicate we experience us truly the loneliness in our life sometimes this exilic experiences see here chapter 54 verse uh, verses 7 onwards for a brief moment i deserted you god says i deserted you you are in exile i have abandoned you but that is for a short time that is for a brief moment then what will happen but with great compassion i will gather you 
I am the God of compassion. With great compassion, I will, I will gather you. Hallelujah. In overflowing anger for a moment, I hid my face from you. There may come such moments when we feel that God has hid his face upon us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But surely, very surely I would say, as God says, but with everlasting love I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. Shall we praise God for that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 10, for the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. This morning shall we experience and understand God as the God of compassion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even our loved ones may depart from us. But still let me tell you, God who is compassionate, our creator, our redeemer, will always stay with us. Hallelujah. How many of you will say amen? amen. This is my experience. This is your experience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will never depart us. But sometimes that happens, but that is only for a short time to teach us something, to discipline us. Hallelujah. Still he is not away, but he is with us. But he experienced that loneliness, that God forsakenness. Even Jesus experienced that. My Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? Hallelujah. Even Jesus experienced that forsakenness. Life is not always smooth. You know that. Our experiences in our life teach us that life is not always smooth. Ups and downs are there. You get older, you understand this truth very well. Hallelujah. Life is not always smooth, easy going. Ups and downs are there. The people whom we think uh, who love us, they will not. At least sometimes they will, they will desert us. They will forsake us. But God says, I have forsaken you for a short time. But out of my compassion, I will gather you. Your exile is going to end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then verse 14 they ask a question, but Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me, my Lord has forgotten me. So that is what Israelites say, those who are in exile, they say, The Lord has forsaken me. We cannot blame them because such a situation they are going through. God has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. How often you have uh, said this? Hallelujah. There are times when we think God really has forsaken us. God has forgotten us. Hallelujah. Would you please read chapter 40, verse 27? There they ask, uh, there, there also we see such assumptions from the people who are in exile. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right disregarded by my God? Thank you. So there also we see the people saying, my ways are not known to God. Those are hidden from God. Why they, ask, why they assume this way? Because they are in such situations. Hallelujah. They are going through such situations. Then God says, in response to their thinking, God says in verse 15, I would just focus my message on that and we would conclude the message. Can a God ask a pertinent question? Can a woman forget her nursing child that she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget and I will not forget you. Hallelujah. What a beautiful verse that is. Read it again. Can a woman forget her nursing child 
that she should have no compassion on the son of her womb. Can a woman forget her child? Normally the answer is no. But there are instances uh, the woman may forget her child. Not only women, men also cannot forget. Right. <laughs> but sometimes out of circumstances, sometimes we hear news of, news of you know, people forgetting their children. Maybe out of circumstances. But normally, this won't happen. But Bible says, God says, even if that happens, this will not happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we praise God? Hallelujah. So presenting some improbabilities and presenting the faithfulness of God is one way we see in the Bible. Hallelujah. In Psalm 34, we know that Bala Simhangalum Iragitade Vishanirikim. Is that possible? Normally that is not possible. But Bible says, even if that happens, this will not happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we got the point. Hallelujah. We, because lions are understood to be the kings of the forest. Will the young ones of lion go hungry? That is not possible normally. In our understanding, that is not possible. But God says, Bible says, in other sambhaviche come, but this will not happen. So that is the surety of the word of God. Do you believe that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you believe this, praise God loudly. Hallelujah. Even that may happen. A woman may forget her child. A father may forget her child. That may happen. But this will never happen. If you believe, praise God again. This will never happen. So Zion says, God has forsaken me. The Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. As we read in other portion, you know, my ways are hidden to him. Why they say this way? Because their situations are like that. We also sometimes, you know, going through such situations, exilic conditions, where we are deserted by people, forsaken by people. It is Mother Teresa who said that, you know, who worked in Calcutta, and one of the, you know, significant persons of history who lived in Calcutta, India, and worked among the lepers of Calcutta, India, she said, you know, it is not poverty that is not a big issue. But when people think that they have no one to love them, that is the most, uh, you know, significant issue. Hallelujah. Sometimes we think that poverty is the big issue. Sickness is the big issue. But more than that, the most vulnerable issue, you believe that someone is loving you. But when you understand that there is no one to love you, we need someone to love us. Hallelujah. You know, there are people who deserted from the church and they have declared that we no need of any church because even in house we can worship Lord. There are such people. But understand that a community is a needed thing. Need to belong is very much needed. Being part of a community is very significant. No man is an island. We usually say that. We cannot isolate from a community. So there should be a group of people to love us. Understand this way. There should be someone, maybe our spouse or parents or children, there should be someone to love us. That gives meaning to our life. We cannot never imagine, um, never think that we can live an isolated life because we are created that way. Hallelujah. We are community oriented. Human beings are 
community oriented we live together we die together hallelujah togetherness is very important understand this morning so that is the most significant issue there is no one to love me hallelujah why these people exile in exile why they thought this way god has hidden his face from us he has forsaken us he has forgotten us because that is their situations in exile they feel isolated they feel deserted forsaken but god says god ask a pertinent question i will ask you god interacts with his people communicate with his people let me tell you this morning learn to communicate with our god because that is what our lord jesus taught you have a god who is your father hallelujah communicate with your father hallelujah talk freely with your father hallelujah. father i have this need hallelujah hallelujah i have this shortcoming i have this difficulties you know whatever concerns we have communicate with our god that is the speciality of the god understanding of the bible let me tell you this morning hallelujah what differentiates the god understanding of the bible from other understandings i will tell you this is the most revolutionary teaching of our lord jesus christ is this the god who is in heaven is your father abba your daddy you know several times i have told you abba is uh, you know our daddy our papa that is no literal father you know but abba is equivalent to dad how you call your father maybe dad i call my father papa and my children also continue that heritage they also call me papa but how you call your father dad or papa or acha acha cha that is abba hallelujah shall we praise god hallelujah. it is not literal father you know that distances us from that personality but this is you know profound intimate word dad my dad is our lord jesus christ said the god who is the creator who is the sovereign lord who is in heaven is your dad your appa your papa your chacha hallelujah such that is the you know specificality the speciality of the god understanding of the bible and he is the loving father hallelujah god loves you is the most profound teaching of the bible god loves you hallelujah and that differentiate the god understanding of the bible from other god understandings in one word let me tell you bible says god as your father god is the loving father hallelujah god ask a pertinent question can a woman forget her child the answer is no god says even if that happens even if she forgets i will never forget you that is the answer for them you are in exile but that is for a short time with compassion i will gather you again hallelujah let me tell you our life even though we are going through much struggles that will end soon god will work miracles for us hallelujah uh, one more verse we would read and i would conclude this message uh, verse 16 behold i have engraved you on the palms of my hand ida naan ninde ende ullam kayil varachirikkunu hallelujah as the names of the tribes of israel were engraved on stones and fastened to the ephod of the high priest as a memorial before the lord god says i have engraved you in my hands naan ningale ende ullam kayil varachirikkunu etra sandoshama shall we praise god hallelujah our god the sovereign lord the holy god the gracious god has engraved our names on his palms 
No one can, you know, change that. Hallelujah. Shall we praise God once again? Even if, uh, you know, the improbable things happen, this will never happen. God will never forget us. He is compassionate. He is always loving God. Hallelujah. And our names are engraved upon his hands. In our difficult situations, in our exilic situations, he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Because he is the God of compassion. Hallelujah.